Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to program parts for a Shop Saber CNC plasma machine. First time CNC users are often apprehensive about the programming software that's required. The funny part is Plasma is the easiest technology to use of all the different machines that we use. Now in our video we're going to go through the different parts of the programming software and how easy it is to actually use. We're going to be using in route fabrication because it's designed specifically for Plasma. Let me show you how easy it is to use. We start out first and we say file new and you see this screen come up and it says define plate well what is a plate well a plate can be a number of things in our case we're going to say the plates are material it could be the size of the table in our case let's say it's 48 by 48 so this represents a piece of material that we're going to make our parts from now what i want to do first is actually to draw a part maybe it's a part that i need for something in our case it's going to be a gusset and i'm going to start with a square 16 by 16 and we'll just place it on the table right now and I need to remove half of it. So we'll come over here. Now, if you'll notice, you see that red square, that means it snapped to that corner. So that looks pretty good and we'll close that. Now I need to get rid of part of that. That operation is called trim. So I'll just click on this, I hit the trim button and that gets rid of what I don't need. So that's a pretty good start right there. Now let's do some more shaping this. I really don't like these sharp points. There's a number of ways to do this, but this is what I find to be the easiest. I create a construction line, just lock it. It doesn't matter how long it is. I'll do the same thing over here. I'll create a line here. Once again, lock it in. Whoops. All right. And we'll accept that and close it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move these lines over to kind of give us a guide of, of how to shorten this. So, I'm going to select that line. I'm going to come up here to the Move button. I'm going to move relative to where it is. And right now, I'm going to say minus 1 and X. And that moves that line. And we'll close that. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll highlight this one. And we'll come over here. And we're actually going to move it in Y 1 inch. And we'll accept that. And we'll close that. Now we'll zoom out. Now let's use the trim function. And so we'll zoom in here. So what we'll do first is we'll come over here and we'll select the trim function and we'll trim that and we'll trim, see we may have to zoom in a little closer. Okay, that one's highlighted and we'll trim that. And you see what that produces is this nice corner. All right, and then let's do the same thing down here. So we'll get rid of that line, we'll get rid of that one, we'll get rid of that one and we'll hit close. Then we'll zoom extents. All right. Now, finally, when you see these little points on here, that really means that those are separate line segments. So now let's select all of these and let's go up here to transform merge. And now that becomes one selection. So that's one closed shape. So now we've created our basic outline. So that looks pretty good. Okay, we've defined the outside of our shape. Now let's add some holes in there to, to really reduce the mass. So there's a couple ways to do this. Let's do this. Let's just put some straight lines in here. We're gonna snap here. And if you'll notice, this snaps to the midpoint. When you see that triangle, that's the midpoint. All right, let's do another line from the midpoint of here to this point, and another line from the midpoint to this point. And it will close out of that. Now we're gonna draw some circles. So we use the circle command. Uh, we'll start with a two inch radius and I'll put that right there and then we'll come back and we'll do a one inch radius and I'll put that on that midpoint and that midpoint. All we have to do now is get rid of those extra lines that we created. So we'll delete those and there's our part. Now let's do one more thing. Let's group it together so that all the pieces of geometry stay together. That way when I move things around, everything moves together. So that's it, we've created our part. That's all it takes to actually create a part in uh, fabrication.
Now let's talk about how we actually apply the machining tool pass in plasma. Well, plasma actually has a kerf. Now here's what that means. If you look at a table saw blade, it leaves a kerf as you cut. If you look at a milling tool or a router bit, everything has a kerf, and plasma does too. So the, the torch that actually does the cutting in metal is actually cylindrical. And so we have to account for that or the part comes out undersized. So where's that determined? Well, it's actually determined in the machine control because you have a group of settings that you use for a specific material. And so that's where that number comes from. So then we come over here and we say, okay, I'm gonna set a curve this wide and that's how it's gonna work. Now let's take a look at how we actually do that in the software. All right, now let's, let's select our part and then let's go up here to this icon and it says curve compensation. And what we do is we select a curve width. In our case, this is 70 thousandths and we just hit okay and there's a tool pass, it's automatic. The green circles that you see are actually the lead ins and lead outs. Now, let's go to simulation and see what actually happens. So we go to simulate ortho and I hit play and what you see here is what's gonna happen on the machine. That's the torch, so it's gonna go over and it's gonna cut those holes out of the center. and then it's gonna cut the outside. So that part will be completed once we get around it. So that's basically how applying the curve works. So it's really simple. And so that finishes our part. Now, but I need more than one part, so let's talk about how we would make more parts. An easy way to make multiple parts is use the mirror tool. So everything's selected. So let's go over here in mirror. Let's make sure we make a copy of it so we have two parts. And then let's mirror along this line and we'll hit apply and close. Now we'll take one of these parts and we'll move it over. So we'll go to move. Let's just move it in X about a half inch, 0.5. And there we go and we'll hit close. So now we've got these two parts together and then let's do this, let's select them and let's do an array. And that array, I really wanna make two columns and I want the space in between them to be about, uh, let's go with, let's go this gap in between, let's make them about an inch apart. And there they are and we'll hit apply and close. Now we've got our parts and then once again, if we wanted to, we could position on the table wherever we want on our material. And then all we have to simply do is select them, go to the curve, apply the curve. There's the tool pathing. Let's go to machining, simulate ortho, and that's what's gonna happen on the machine. Once again, now we've gone from drawing one part, making copies, and now we're tool pathing. Now that gives us all four gussets that we need for our tank. One of the things people really like to do with plasma is, is to cut out signs because it works so well at that. And typically you're gonna start with some kind of graphic. Let me show you how easy that is in in or out fabrication. All right, the first thing we do is we bring in our actual graphic. So let's go File, Import, and I've got one called Freedom. We'll bring that in, it's black and white. We'll select it and then we'll make it a little bigger. So let's just grab this corner and that's probably about right, and we'll bring it over to the center. Now, that's actually just a graphic. There's no lines there, so we have to create the lines first for the plasma to cut. So what we do is we select it, we hit this icon, and that creates the vectors. It's called vectorizing. And so now there's the lines, and so let's go ahead and just delete our graphic to start with. We'll zoom out a little bit. Oops, we'll select that by window, we'll bring it up to the middle, and we'll zoom out. Now, in our case, our geometry is really good, but that's not always the case. Sometimes the bitmaps you bring in are kind of jaggy. So what you have to do is there's a function here that will clean it up for you. It's simply that. And it's called cleanup, and that'll clean it up sometimes if you if if the geometry wasn't so good. Now one of the things I want you to notice is you have blue lines and red lines. Blue lines are outside cut, red lines are inside cut. Um, basically, we've got an extra shape here. If we could get rid of that, it's probably gonna be cleaner. So here's what we do. We go up here to transform, ungroup, and then we select that line and we delete it. Now let's take a look at this again. Open these up and now you notice it's, the blue lines have changed. But now here is a problem that you have sometimes. 
If we cut this, there's nothing holding this inside of that R, so that's gonna be open. That might be okay, but let me show you what to do if it's not. What I can do is come over here to make a little rectangle, and we'll create that rectangle. It's right here. And we'll do the same thing here. All right, then we'll trim it. We'll say, okay, we'll trim those. Let's just trim away what we don't need. Zoom in on that a little bit. So when you actually cut the, oh, there's one more thing. When you actually cut this, then these little tabs will, will hold that in place. Once again, you may or may not need to do that. Okay, and so we'll hit close. We'll zoom extents. And then let's go ahead and select this and make sure everything's merged. So we'll go to transform, merge. That's all joined together again. And now the tool path, it just like before, select it. It will hit this icon. We'll do the curve compensation. And there's the tool path. And let's go to machining and simulate ortho. And that's what's going to happen on the machine. So creating a graphic and turning it into a sign is real easy with this software. So far, we've looked at parts that we've either drawn or created based on a graphic. But Enroute Fabrication has a shape wizard that helps you make parts that are used over and over and over, but it's parametric so you can set the sizes. Let me show you a great example of this. First thing you do is you go down here and you hold this button in and you'll notice there's all kinds of, of different shapes here. Let's take this one. This is one of my favorite ones. It's a flange. Now, when I say it's parametric, that means that I can change the sizes. So what would that be? Well, that would be the number of holes, for instance. Maybe I only need six holes. I could say the inner radius. I could change that, and you'll see that change on the drawing. So, so basically, I can fill out the dimensions here, and it creates a part for me. All right, so I say that's what I want. Actually, let's go eight holes. And this is the shape I use over and over. And then once I hit close, then I group it, all right? So we'll hit transform group, and then I can just move this out. Now, let's do something else. Let's tell it that I want uh, as many as I can get. So let's say I wanna fill the plate. I'm gonna leave the spacing an inch and an inch, and we'll hit apply. Now, there's a whole sheet of those. So now I've used the shape wizard to parametrically create that. I said, just fill the sheet up. I use those all the time. And then all I have to do is select the sheet, and hit the curve button and hit OK. And there's the tool pathing. And let's look at simulation. It's that easy. Now I've created a whole sheet of flanges. Text is a really important part of plasma, especially if you're doing signs. Now let's take a look at this. Let me explain some idiosyncrasies about this. So let's, let's go back to our actual freedom isn't free. And if you remember, some of these letters, we actually had to put some places in there because if you don't, these circles just disappear. So we put these little bridges in here and connect them, and that way when it gets cut out, those actually still show. Well, you can use normal fonts, but the problem you run into is you'll have, you'll have to actually put those bridges in unless you use a font that, that is a stencil font. Let me give you an example. So I come over here and I say, I'm gonna put text in, and I've selected a font called Gunplay, which is a stencil font. And I'm gonna say, okay, I want the letters to be four inches tall. I'll select that, and so we'll say, uh, let's just do this 9, 11, 201. And we'll hit close. And then we'll take this and we'll move it over and get it somewhat centered. Or you could put whatever you want in there. But now look at it, it's a stencil font, so it has those little bridges built in. So one of the things also you can do with fonts, in fact, let's, let's look over here. Let's just move to the side here. You know, I can actually do this. I can actually, let's create a couple lines here. And I can actually make these fonts fit that. Let me show you. So I pick this text, and this time I'll pick on that line, and you see how it's, it's normal to it. And let's call this Shop Saber. So and there's, there's the Shop Saber font. Now, but it, see how it's all scrunched up here, but I can select that, come over here, and then there's a tool, whoops, let me pick the correct tool. 
There we go. And then when I select this, you see I can actually grab this and stretch it out. So it's really a powerful tool. It gives you a lot of, of capabilities, but the key to this, for the most part, is to make sure you have a stencil font so that you don't have to worry about the little holes dropping out. Now, we'll get rid of this. We'll come back over here to our actual sign. Now, if we take this, and we can actually come over here. If we want to space it out, we could do that a little bit. Maybe we want to spread it out. Okay, that looks pretty good. And it will center that again. Looks pretty good. And then we can also, if we want, we can select that and come over to our text tool, hold it down, and that will actually, actually turn it into arcs. So now it's not text, it's actually geometry. And then if we want a tool path, it's just like anything else. We select it, we select our curve compensation, and we hit it, and there it is. And if we look at simulation, and we play it, you see it cuts it out just like anything else. So the, the message of this is the difference when you're using text in fabrication is be sure that you use a stencil font if you can, otherwise you're gonna to have to add those bridges in there. But it's a real easy way to make a great effect on a sign. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. In route fabrication is extremely powerful and amazingly easy to use. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.